not having an achievable core in every research project. That is one of the major components of a recipe for a disastrous academic career. Now, the thing about this is that every single research project is actually gotten or funded based on the eureka moment that they promise. But that is not actually what most of the uh, projects that are funded deliver. It is the achievable core that means that your career will continue to go from success to success. The eureka moment is nothing more than the marketing ploy that you use to get money from the funder. Ethical or not, that is the reality. So the thing is, is that academics can get a little bit swept up in this eureka moment and they can feel like it's something they have to achieve once they get funding. But in every academic uh, and research funding grant application, there should be an achievable core, something that you know you'll almost certainly be able to achieve, but you get the funding based on selling the idea of a lifetime, the world-changing eureka moment that will bring in the fame and the fortune to your university and your field and your research group. However, there is always something that is achievable and should actually be the main focus for the majority of the uh, research project. So every great research project will have an achievable core. And initially, when the research project first starts, you can try the riskier thing because maybe you've got three years, so you try for those eureka moments. But as it progresses and you realize that that's getting harder and harder, you start to put more focus on the achievable core of that research project. So it's not sexy, it's not particularly exciting, but it works. Make no mistake, as an academic, your job is not necessarily research anymore, but it's about getting funding to do research. Too many academics, especially early career academics that I've seen throughout my career, actually sort of like stop applying for funding once they have funding, and that's the worst thing you can do. You should always be applying for funding because it's kind of like a numbers game, right? You apply for 10 things, maybe one or two, if you're lucky, will actually come to fruition. The older academics know this and uh, they start building up relationships with other academics so that they can all be on each other grants so that within a year they've all applied for you know five to ten grant applications of which fingers crossed one of them will be eventually awarded to them not many researchers and academics really understand that you need to be intimately kind of aware of who's giving money what they're giving money for and whether or not you can apply for it right now. You should be doing that at least once a week once you've got your PhD and you're actually in academia is looking for funding, looking for new funding, looking for old funding, looking for when funding opportunities open up. Put those in your calendar because your job is primarily to bring in money. And if you're not continually looking for money, your career is headed for disaster. The recipe for a disastrous career in academia has a good sprinkling of bad relationships. If you are not networking and building up relationships early on from the moment you start your career in academia, it's gonna be a tough time for you. It's like everything else in the world. It is who you know that can go a long way to helping open up uh, opportunities for you. I look at this in two levels. The first level is your immediate kind of circle. People in your department, um, academics, the students, the administrative team, all of those people need to have good, positive working relationships with you. So you need to spend a bit of time going along to those sort of team building things and those um, those sort of like luncheons that they put on and the sad uh, drippy cake in the corner with the weak cup of coffee or tea. Like it's those events that you've just got to show up to and start to build up those relationships. Um, it's, it's not easy and sometimes it feels weird, but at least being part of the immediate department sort of social uh, uh, network can really help you in the early stages of your career. And the second level is the wider field. Who else is working in your field outside of your department? Start reaching out to them. Have a look for the types of conferences, symposia, networking events they are attending and try to be there if funding and money and time allows. 
getting those two sort of like circles of networking sort of um, as strong as you can get it will really help your career. And it's not just about sort of going and kissing the right people's bums. It's also about making sure that you are a known entity and you're building up your professional and personal brand in the right areas in the right ways. So network, do it. You can start off your academic career in a terrible way by working for someone that is a known jerk. Someone that has a bad reputation in your field, in your department, just will not help your career at all. Now the problem is, is that sometimes as an undergraduate, as an early sort of like career researcher, you can look at these successful people, you can be like, wow, I want to emulate their um, success. So you kind of like start to become them in a way and you look up to them. But unfortunately, the people that are at the top are sometimes, it arguably, mostly there because they have stomped on the careers of people to get to their position. Um, they are sometimes very ruthless. They will happily sort of like take your ideas and run with them as their own. And so you do have to really understand what type of person you are getting involved with. A PhD supervisor that is not helpful, collaborative, or supportive will easily torpedo your career, as will a principal investigator that you're working under as a postdoc, as a research assistant, or even as a master's student. So be really careful about who you select to work with and under, and go check out my other video where I talk about how to choose a PhD supervisor. Boom, links everywhere. One of the biggest ingredients for an academic career that ends up being a disastrous mess of a recipe is dishonesty and um, lack of integrity. That is so important, but unfortunately, I have seen older academics, you know, people that should know better, lie and be dishonest and fabricate data, push the, um, the, the, the limits of what they're saying and the conclusions they can make from their work. If you do this enough, you'll end up with a bad reputation. So please do not even try to be a little bit dishonest or a little bit plagiarism-y because it will never end up well. One thing that I'm witnessing at the moment from my friends who are actually in successful academic careers is that they always seem to be out of time. And I think that's because they avoid making the big decisions early on. When you first get grant money, when you first start a project, you feel like there is a load of time and it can be difficult to kind of find the motivation and the pressure maybe to make decisions quickly, assertively and follow them through until you've seen the result of that decision. Early on in a research project, it's very easy to feel like you have got a million uh, years to do what you have to do. Before you know it, it's the final year and everyone's panicked. So make sure that no matter when you get your research project funding or your PhD when you start, you hit the ground running because you'll quickly run out of time. Sometimes it's better to make the wrong decision and learn from it quickly rather than put off making a, de a decision waiting for that like perfect bit of inspiration or bit of data to come in. So make decisions, follow them through, see the results, reassess and start again. Making those big decisions will really help in the early stages and help keep up that momentum as you're going through your research project. So a disastrous academic career is someone who is not decisive enough and then runs out of time really quickly. It sounds silly, but I'm seeing that right now with some of the people that um, I've worked with in the past. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about the ingredients or the recipe for a disastrous academic career. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And if you want more from me, there are a couple of ways to go about it. First of all, sign up to my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been in, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my new project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD survival guide as well as the insider forum and a blog growing out with information to make your PhD in academia work for you. All right then, I shall see you in the next video.